Hey viewers, welcome to the channel. We got that Veer bike quadra sprint up on jack stands ready to take it to phase two. Now a lot of you that haven't been keeping up with my channel are probably wondering the first thing that comes to mind, which I always get when I'm riding a bike, did I make this thing or did I buy it? I bought this. This is a 2015 quadra sprint uh, quadricycle, it's a four wheel bike. I bought it when I retired from the studio business and uh, I wanted something a little unique, something different. You won't see this too often right down your, down your city blocks. These bikes are generally made for like um, bicycle rentals, like go down the beach. You'll probably see some of these out for uh, riding around. People rent them. Uh, mountain resorts, they rent them. Uh, they primarily make these bikes for bike rentals, but you can also buy this as a private customer. So uh, I wanted to buy something that was made in the United States. This particular one was made in the United States. There's two others that I was looking at, which was the Rhodes, and also was looking at the slurry bikes. I like this particular bike uh, much better than the other two bikes because it was better priced, and it has that rack and pinion front steering which means that will transverse slopes better like you're going down the sidewalk and you hit that little driveway that slopes down the bike won't feel like it's tipping over it corners better uh, not to say you can't tip it over you can but it will corner better than the roads or the slurry bikes and it's lighter in weight so we did phase one we get ready to tear this thing down and take it to phase two. Now those of you who are just tuning into this channel and wondering what the heck is phase one, I'll show you what we did to this bike, the modifications we did to this bike for phase one. All right, just to give you all an update for those of you who are just viewing this channel for the first time, what phase one in, um, was all about was the electric motor. Uh, when I first bought this bike, uh, my intentions was to put an electric motor in it right away, but then I found out that if I put the electric motor in it, I'd void my warranty, and I had a two-year warranty. So I decided to wait. I shelved the idea and decided to wait for the uh, two-year warranty to expire. Now, if you look at this, you can see that there's a separate, it's not on one single axle, it's a separate axle. So one side of this is driving the left side, is driving the wheel then on this side you have your 21 speed on this side for the pedal pusher now this is a scooter motor it's not a bike bicycle conversion kit uh, the problem with the com bicycle conversion kits I couldn't find anything that would work on this bike without having to do major uh, modifications to the frame and that's something I want to didn't want to have to do I didn't want to have to reinvent the wheel on this thing so this was the simplest easiest cheapest way to do this now it doesn't have pedal assist or any of that stuff it's pretty straightforward you either give it a little bit of, a little bit of throttle or and pedal it uh, generally I pedal it to get it going a little bit then I ease it on the thumb throttle which is up here so um, that's how we, uh, we approached this. And uh, this was basically a trial run to see if it would work. It does work, but it does have some problems. Okay, uh, we're gonna show you what the uh, frame flexing, what I'm talking about here. This is the only problem I encountered with this thing. And plus the fact because the motor plate's made out of wood, it makes, it creates a lot of noise, but uh, here we go. Now, keep in mind, this the bicycle is up in the air. There's no load on the tires. And watch how it flex on. Here we go. I'll do it one more time. When 
you got this thing on the ground and you load on the tires, it's a lot worse. So you have to ride it in a certain way so you don't flex the frame. You have to pedal it to get it going a little bit, you know, like one or two miles an hour and then ease in on the throttle. Like. Like that. And you can ride it in that kind of condition. But we're going to fix that. And I'm going to show you what the problem is. Well, to begin with, this particular, when this bike was made, it, this piece right here that mounts up here, this is the only place that mounts. I put a, a big bolt through it to help stabilize it, but it didn't work. I mean, it, it probably would be a lot worse if I didn't have this bolt through there, so I did modify that. But the problem is, is that this is basically was made just for a basket to carry stuff. It wasn't really intended as a motor mount. So what's happening is because there's only one place here to, uh, to stabilize it, it's flexing downward. Okay, I decided how I'm going to have this welded up. This is... Uh, one inch by one inch steel square tubing and what we're going to do is we're going to have it weld to here and underneath uh, but you see this has a projection it slants down so he's going to need to have a, a bender so we have uh, out here in Casa Grande we have a lot of farms they have uh, portable welders. They're called fabricator welders. So I'm going to call one up. And when I call him up, I'm going to make sure he has the capability of being able to bend uh, square tubing, steel tubing. I'm sure he does. But just to be safe. And if he does, and I'll make an appointment for him to come by and have him take a look at this. The only problem I have with this method is... It's really close to that uh, brake hub. I mean, there's about a quarter of an inch clearance. And uh, I think we'll be fine. But if he can come up with an idea to just space it out another to a half inch, because I like to keep it at least a half inch away, or if he can match it up to the existing one here, because how they did this one, they uh, cut it and a slant and they welded it up on the top and it ground down the bottom and we could do the same thing where it goes down at the bottom and welds up right about here so we'll uh, see what he, what the welder says when it gets here but that's that's the plan of action Okay, we're getting ready to take these, uh, strip the tubes and tires off the rims and get the rims off. I already did the right side, so I didn't want to bore you with all of them, but I just want to show you how these will, how these will come off. Uh, that's probably good enough. Kind of like the old model T's back in the day, back in the 30s. They used to run tubes in their tires. Back in the day, they didn't have tubeless tires. And uh, they didn't have to take the wheel off, you know, like you do on a, your normal bikes. I think more how to do it. Now these uh, tire spoons are actually for a motorcycle. I used to change my own tires on my motorcycle when I had one. I had an XJ550 Maxima. Tire layer. Get off 
the rim. That's uh, 15 sixteenths, but I'm just going to use uh, some big old channel locks here. These are uh, nylock bolts, so they won't come off. You know, you have to get them pretty loose to get them off. There we go. Now this bike has uh, seal bearings all the way around the bike, even in, in the inner axle bearings and even in the uh, cranks. That one's ready to go down to the bike shop. So, what they're going to be doing is they're going to, there's a 36 spoke rim, and uh, they're going to de spoke it. And then we're going to respoke it to a four inch wide rim that has 36 holes in it. Uh, when I talked to them last time, I talked to them about doing this job. They said it wasn't a problem. Now I don't know how much it's going to cost me for because I'm going to have them do the do the rims, uh, the tires, tire liners, basically. So when I go pick it up, all I got to do is mount them on the bike. So I'm buying the tires and everything from my local t bike shop. So I wouldn't be a bit surprised by the time I'm finished. This is going to end up costing me oh, around 300, 350 bucks. Now what I want to show you is uh, see how close these holes are for the driving hub. Because my original thought was because I was going to buy a right axle for the, this side because the original axle was on here only came to here it wasn't long enough so i was thinking about buying a right axle from quadricycle you know from veer bikes and put it on here but then when i saw that flange i thought that's not going to hold up so that's why i went with these these uh hubs here so uh so what i want to do is I'm gonna order me another ax a new axle for this side and uh, I have a hub for it I already got the hub I just need the axle so when I get it all torn apart so I want to tear this all apart I don't want the axle inside here when this guy's welding on it I'm gonna take the bearings out take this whole axle apart this one too and uh, that way he can gauge the thickness and set his uh, arc welder to the right thickness so he doesn't burn through you know because I don't want him to burn through where I can't get the axle through it so uh, I have to let him know that then we got to take the motor the motor plate off take the speed controller get out of the way take the seat off take the canopy off and uh, get it ready for the welder uh, so I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna take this one off first and then take this one off last and once I get this off I can get a measurement and I call BMI uh, go-karts and they uh, they'll cut me an axle to the exact size I need uh, and when I get it it'll probably take about four or five days to get that and uh, these will be in the shop I'm sure these are probably going to take at least a week or two to get these all done 
more than likely he's going to have to order the rims for it <coughs> and anything else he thinks he may need like spokes or whatever so uh so we'll pick it up again uh, once we get to the bike shop hopefully uh he'll let me uh record inside the shop I'm, I'm gonna have to go in there and ask permission and uh, if he allows me to let me uh, record in there we'll pick it up from there if not then I'll just uh, let you know what what we're what's going on with these fixing to take these down to the bike shop now I don't drive this car very often, so I always have problems with it because it's, it's got so many features on it. I don't know what buttons to push for <laughs> stuff. Oh well, looks like the lights come on. Okay. See what the bike shop says. Hopefully it'll let me record inside. I don't have to ask permission. Keyless entry. Oh. Uh. Okay. I think I gotta put my foot on the brake. Start it up. Well, the bike shop's not that far away. All right, now we're in the right way. Hopefully, they're not too busy. I'm park right here. Barbershop's kind of busy. I don't have to get haircuts because I'm bald. <laughs> okay, I had to take the rims back home. Uh, this is the deal. I didn't want to record because uh, the place was swamped because we got all the snowbirds in there trying to get all their bikes fixed before they leave town. So this is the deal. The deal is he needs to research it. So he got uh, okay. Uh, let me try to explain it to you. He did a real fast check. And he couldn't find anything other than a three inch wide, you know, for a three inch wide tire. Um, he said, uh, not to say that they're not available for a four inch, but he will need to do the research. So rather than these laying around the shop and getting lost, he'd rather me take them back. And he'll call me back when uh, he has the information. Uh, He'll need to replace all the spokes. All the spokes will be replaced with new spokes. All the spokes will have to come out and be replaced. So he said they'll have to probably custom make some, make the spokes, custom make the spokes, whatever. Uh, so I, all I see is dollar signs going up and up and up. So we'll see what it does and what it comes into. Uh, worse comes to worse. Um, I might just leave these rims and just put new tires on it, you know, white walls or something. Uh, don't know yet. Uh, let them do the research, then call me back. Meantime, we're gonna start doing the tear down for the welder. Hopefully I'll have more luck with the welder than I am with the bike shop. So uh, anyway, he's gonna call me back when he gets up has time to do the research. Like I said, he's swamped in there right now. He must have like 20 bikes in there for uh, for servicing of some sort, flat tires, tune-ups, whatever. So it seems uh, like this uh, bike shop is the only bike shop in town. So, you know, if you want to go to a different bike shop, you have to go like 25, 30 miles. 
I'll lay the channel for Queens Creek, which is just as far, so this this town could use another bike shop. They're the kind of things I'm seeing going in there. There's real simple stuff like uh, you know, tune up the derailleur because they're not getting all their gears, flat tires, but mainly uh, tune ups, which is real simple to do. So, anyway, we're going to end this. Uh, uh, when I get more information about it, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. But right now, we're going to take the uh, canopy off, the seat off, the whip, the motor, motor plate, chain. Um, we're going to strip this thing down to the bone, basically, because uh, we're going to do, because when I get the welding done, we're going to have to do some, uh, <coughs> we're going to have to do uh, some painting, and uh, I've done fluorescent painting before, I'm going to show you, I, uh, This bike in the back, this one here with the fluorescent paint, and I swore up and down I'll never paint another bike in fluorescent paint ever again. A real pain in the ass to paint this stuff. So <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can find some fluorescent enamel paint, so I don't have to do the finish on it. Because then that, because all I could find before was flat, the flat fluorescent paint, and it's just a real pain in the ass to put it on. <laughs> and it um, it marks up real easy. So what I might be doing is going to like a tractor orange um, when I repaint the bike, but I'll just do sections at a time. But uh, so uh, I got nothing but time. Um, this project's probably gonna take me. You know, Two, maybe three months to complete it everything I want to do to it okay in order to remove the canopy uh, I'm doing it in reverse uh, when you install it you install the back first then you install the front so I'm on un I undid the front and now all I have to do is just take these two screws out and it comes right out and I just hang it up somewhere and we'll be done. Now the canopy's off. Uh, just to let you know, I won't be putting this canopy back on. Uh, the only time I'll be putting on the canopy is when I uh, take it to like a bike show or something. When I get there, I would put it on just, just for the look. Because uh, basically here in Casa Grande, it's so windy out here most, most of the time. Um, he acts like a parachute. <laughs> I mean, it looks nice, but it doesn't really serve a purpose for me here in uh, Arizona. So now we're getting ready to take off, take off the uh, recumbent seat. I'm going to be detaching this from the recumbent seat because we're going to take this down to the postery shop and have it reupholstered. Okay, I get the uh, recumbent seat off, and now I'm just going to take out these four bolts, drop the seat out, so we can take that to the postery okay, shop. Okay, the seat's all off. We got the, the bottom seat off, ready to go to the, the poster shop, be reupholstered. I might look online, and it looks like this might be replaceable, this cover. So if it is, it's something I can do. Because all you do is pull the staples, slip over the new cover, and staple it back down. But, I don't know if I like the gray-black kind of scheme. I want to, might want to do orange black and then the same kind of leather here yeah okay I'll next thing is the uh, safety flag by the way just to let you know this is uh, battery operated but it's uh, it has lights on it LED lights I hardly ever have to change the batteries in that and that's something I can reach around and turn on so we'll leave okay. that whips off it's over there next thing to do is Loosen up the motor, take the chain off, take the motor okay, off. Okay, the motor's off. Next thing to do is take off the motor plate and remove the uh, 
the speed controller get it out of the way and we're probably going to remove the gear selector because I got a little problem going on with the derailleur see how it should be down like that it's it needs adjustment or I need a new derailleur because the spring in it well actually the springs right there should be like that and uh you know to keep the tension in it's, it's see it's way up like that and it should be down like that Let's see if i can get a shot at it it should be like that that's sitting like that so that's not right it should be like that so we'll be looking at that when we put it back together okay we got the speed control out of the way it's way up over here uh, i took the uh cable off and i uh, tried to adjust this derailleur we're gonna have to replace it it's shot <coughs> which means I gotta find the master link let's get the master link then I gotta take it out but uh, we'll worry about that when we uh, well you know what I'm probably just gonna take go ahead and take the chain out and take it off get it out of the way so that the uh, welder so the, the way. next thing is the left axle all right, so we're going to take off this collar right here and loosen this uh, set screw. And then we're going to take a file. I'm going to file off because when you put that set screw on there, it uh, leaves a burr. So when this hub slides off, it will hang up on that burr. So you've got to make sure you clean up your burr spots before you slide the hub off. So I already loosened this. So we're going to take that off. And we're gonna see that there was a burr right there, so we're gonna file that off. So when we slide this off, this is all loose; it's ready to come off. But I want to make sure that that burr is not gonna make this hang up. Okay, so I got this loose, but the problem is I can't take it completely off because the axle needs to be pulled this way a little bit so I can slide it off, which means I gotta break this loose next. So. You see I got some burrs here and need to take those off and loosen the brake drum and then slide it off the keyboard. So I filed up this so it's smooth enough because I took this and it slides past it so that's good enough. I loosened up the bolts or the set screws for the brake drum. Now I'm t removing the, uh, the brake shoe. So I got to pull this Carter key and remove the pin and I can take out the brake shoe and then I'm ready to try to drive this thing off. Hopefully it's going to come off without too much trouble. Yeah, it came right off. I just had to hammer on it just a little bit and it came right off. So now I need to move this collar so I can pull the axle out and I can remove the sprocket hub and the brake hub and pull the axle. Okay, everything's removed. It was real easy to take out. The only thing that's left now is to take out my uh, my bearings. Okay, I get the bearings out. I'm putting everything in a little plastic bag and I'll mark this for the left side. Put the brake uh, band, they call these band brakes. I think I'm gonna order me new brakes, might as well, since I got it apart. They don't cost that much. So, left side's done, now right side. Okay, I got the cluster off. I filed down the, the Allen. Now, it's a good idea to take a punch and ping this keyway so it doesn't slide with the hub. Okay, the right axle's all out. And the uh, only thing's left now is to uh, find a master link in this thing. Take the master link out, pull the chain, and remove the derailleur. Well, viewers, it's that time to kind of wind down this video for part one. I don't like my videos running more than 30 minutes. So if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button and make sure you subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell. And don't forget to leave the comments down below and or criticism. Uh, we will pick this up at part two 
for the welding and hopefully we'll have an answer about their rims and tires. So thanks for watching.